Man, we have seen so much great stuff here at NAM 2018 here in Anaheim. And, you know, when it, when it comes to microphones, you know, I'm always like, it's like going to the checkout line in the supermarket with all the gum and candy. You've got so many choices out there. One of the great choices, a uh, product I'm familiar with, is with Vanguard Audio, and they make great microphones. And we have the head guy there, Derek Berger. How you doing? Hi, nice to be here, George. Actually, you can talk to that one. Oh, yes, I suppose right. I can, huh? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the history of your company and why you make microphones. Yeah, so I've been a electronics guy all my life. was a music major in college and pretty quick, quickly figured out everybody there was better at the making of the music. But I became a facilitator uh, and got into engineering, production, arranging, booking. I've done some studio work for VO guys, actually, as well. And uh, hooked up with my design partner, Ken, uh, out of college and worked for him for four years. And then we started this company together and uh, I just want to help people make great noises and not sell a kidney to do it, you know? Because that's the choices I had in college was the $99 mics or the ones where you mortgage your firstborn kid in advance. Exactly. Now this is, this is the mic that I reviewed last year, the V13. What makes this a great mic for voiceover? Oh, well, it's incredibly sensitive. It's a three micron capsule. So as Scott Rummel put it, he has two of these. He, uh, he said it captures all the nooks and crannies of his voice. So it's an incredibly sensitive capsule. Also, you can do some natural voicing and EQ with the pattern switch. The cardioid, straight up and down, it's just right to the front, but you can narrow it to increase proximity effect the way that you get proximity effect on a 416 or you can widen it. So if you're a mover and talker like myself, then you can actually widen it out a little bit and that'll sweeten the top end and it'll reduce the proximity effect. Right, and also create more of a lively space too. Yes, absolutely, you can capture your space. It depends on what you're doing mm -hmm. and what the client demands. So it's also incredibly quiet, takes compression and the EQ exceptionally well. But when we used it with Scott Rummel and Chris Fries and Bill Rogers and Cammie Dixon and I met all these wonderful voiceover people and they're using it with almost no EQ. They might throw the roll off on it, but it just manages to sit and cut. In fact, when I was at Scott's studio and we were demoing this, he asked me to try and make it sound like it's 416. So we put it straight up and we actually tweaked his Avalon EQ, just two knobs a little bit, and he loved it. And we actually did a cut for a major motion picture trailer with this and he said let's see if they notice if it's different than the four they almost never notice it's, <laughs> it's like oh god that sounds good good take yeah. yeah what makes a great microphone what is it that you're putting in here that you don't have to reveal any secrets but what is it that really makes a microphone stand out from other ones well there's a few things for me some people prefer a flat microphone i say a microphone should have character and should be able to match a voice and sound record ready right to tape as we say for music recording but the same thing applies for VO. The more you tweak things, the more things you run it through, the more noise, the more artifacts you're introducing. So for us, the science, the objective science of low noise and tight tolerances and things of that nature with the subjective art of why do we like the way things sound? Why do we like this record better than this record? Right. Why do we like this microphone better than that microphone? So what makes a good microphone is very is, is part of the ear, and so we developed this in studio sessions all over LA. We we're fortunate enough to be able to test this microphone up against microphones that cost 10 times as much. Yeah. What is it that makes, what is it that changes those tolerances? What is it that makes it more, more sensitive? Uh, certainly the capsule. There's a million things about a capsule, the size, the diaphragm thickness, the diaphragm spacing, the backplate drilling. I could get really nerdy on you, you but I'm gonna to, try not to, to yes. <laughs> But the capsule is a huge factor in it. Ours is a custom voice capsule. Ken designed it himself. It's based on kind of a C12 or AKG 251 capsule, but we tweak some aspects of it to give it more bottom end and more ooey gooey warmth like a chocolate chip cookie right out of the oven, you know? Right, right. And the presence, the mid range presence that really brings the intelligibility out, because I'm a bit of a slurrer when I talk, and it brings the intelligibility of those, those uh, frequencies out in around 3.5 to 5K. Additionally, the shock mount is something that you noted yes. on the video. You can get right up to it and uh, not have to worry about the spider shock mount in your face. So you can work the mic 
really closely and not have to worry about the shock mount getting in the way. If you want to get that really deep LaFontaine growl, you can get right up on there. And uh, even if you have a thinner voice like me, you can still get that really bassy tone. Yeah, and, and a much quieter place too. Right? Oh yeah, maybe a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> well, Derek, it is a pleasure to meet you in the flesh finally after we've talked so many times about, yes. about this microphone and some of the other microphones you have. Uh, great selection of stuff. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you so much for stopping by, guys. All right. Vanguard Audio. VanguardAudioLabs.com. This one's 749th Street.